Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at some hidden settings in CAD Sketcher to make your sketching a lot easier. For instance, if we look on the screen at the moment, we can see the interactive constraints. These sit outside of the sketch before we would have to come in and edit the sketch and change the constraints from within here. So looking from the top, so you can see the constraints in here. But now we have the interactive constraints which allow us to tweak the sketches from the actual 3D view itself. Hit the refresh and there's no need to come into these sketches. It can all be done straight from the model. As long as we refresh in between. There is also a setting to allow you to select entities from other sketches. For instance, I have these two sketches here that are separate. I can edit one and select the other sketch and constrain to it. So let's have a look at these hidden settings in CAD Sketcher and see how we can use them. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help span the channel. So I'm in Blender, I've opened a model and we're gonna look at these CAD Sketcher hidden settings. The hidden settings will appear in another collateral menu on the right hand side under the sketcher. So these are from the flyout bar. If I hit N or use the little arrow on the right hand side here, and I can come down to CAD Sketcher, the tab here, we've got the three sections underneath. So to enable the hidden settings, let's go to up to edit and preferences. In here, we come down to the add ons. What we'll end up with is a list of the add-ons and you'll find CAD Sketcher in here. It'll either be open or closed. So we expand that section. We can come down and in the advance, you see this checkbox here, which is unchecked, the show debug settings. These are settings that have been worked on and are going to be included in CAD Sketcher. If we check that, what happens on the right hand side, we see another section here with a number of settings. So we can close that. In the preferences, just make sure that we've got the auto save preferences here. If not, we'll have to save the preferences so it shows next time. The settings underneath are in development and there are a number here and there are some pretty interesting settings in here that help with our CAD sketching. The first one that I want to show you is to hide interactive constraints. So at the moment we can see our model is on screen and if we want to get to any of the constraints I have to edit the sketch. So I click edit on the sketch, our sketch pops up here. Let's look down on the Z axis. So we can see that the model itself has been ghosted. Let's come up and turn the floor off and the grid off to make it a lot easier to see. So you can see the model has been ghosted and we've got the constraints within here. The constraint selectability should be on. So this one should be checked. These allow me to select these constraints and I can change them. If this was off, I wouldn't be able to change these constraints as you can see. So that one will be checked as default. I just uncheck these before coming here. So what this option does is allow us to toggle whether we can edit these constraints inside or outside the sketch. Let me leave the sketch now so you can see the constraints aren't there. Let's uncheck this and we get the constraints within. So you can see them there. If we've got this constraint selectability on, that means we can come into one of these constraints, click it and change, say, the distance. The distance has taken, but you see that the model itself hasn't changed. That's come up to the top where we've got add sketch and hit the refresh button. Straight away, you can see that's changed and it makes it a lot easier when we're looking at our object and we can change these on the fly. Now there is another setting that I want to go through that allows you to take external geometry from another sketch to constrain against in others. For this, we must make sure that the false entity redraw is on. If this isn't on, it should be on as default. Our sketches, if we start moving them, we see that the points move 
and none of the lines move with it. So this must be set to checked. Therefore, when we move this, you can see these lines are moving and the points moving with it. So we've got our sketch and we'll set some diameter in here. Say so these two, come onto the tools and set a distance. I want the distance as horizontal and set this to eight. We've got this one here. We'll set some height as well with a distance. Alignment is going to be vertical and set this distance to something like five. And hit enter. So we've got that there. So we've got our sketch, it's fully defined sketch, and we leave the sketch. Let's come up to our views and hide the floor and turn off the grid to make this a little bit easier on the eye. So we can see that there. If I create a new sketch, add a new sketch. We'll go along this plane this time and look from the y-axis. We can see that if we added any geometry in here, let's say we added a rectangle again, in standard care practices, we'll be able to constrain against this point and the other sketch by importing the geometry or this just being available to select. At the moment, we can see we can't do that. We can't actually select this point. Let's right click to cancel the tool at this point and shift select this point because it's not highlighting. So what do we do? Well, the new options, those invisible options, we have got this make all entities selectable. If I check that, what happens now? I can select the entities behind. We have to be aware of the constraints we're using. For instance, if I bring this around this way, we won't use a coincident constraint against these two because it just won't work. If we did try to use that type of constraint, take in this point and shift click in this point and coming up and using the coincident, we deform the underlining sketch. Let's control Z that. So what we need to do is take this point and this line, shift click them and use a midpoint constraint. Therefore our sketch stays upon the same plane. And we can see that if we come down and show original entities, we can see that sketch is sitting upon there. Remember, this is still in development, so these are still being tested and developed as we speak. There is also another setting, and that's this one here, a line view. What that does, if I leave the sketch and say come into this one, our view automatically gets aligned to the sketch that we've selected. If I leave the sketch now, we return to an all view. There are some bugs around this and you may have to use the back tick key and go to the view selected if you have any of these sketches extruded. So if I come into this sketch now, we can see it's upon this plane and our plane comes around. If I leave that, we go back to our normal view. So I hope that's given you an idea of some of the new settings that are in CAD Sketcher and how to use them. We'll be using some of those going forward in our learning to get the best from this for our modeling needs. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the new one. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.